right now on Five on Your Side at 10. Another cold night ahead, then a big warm up just in time for the Easter weekend. A MoDOT worker and her unborn baby killed while on the job. Tonight, their families fight at the Missouri Supreme Court. Our top story, a new plan to fight crime on a regional level, leads to a contentious battle between leaders. You cannot mandate that we hire. We're not mandating. We're just saying. You are mandating. Must. Must is a mandate. Tempers flared at today's meeting of the East West Gateway Council. Good evening, everyone. I'm Kelly Jackson and I'm Mike Bush. Despite some back and forth, area leaders are joining forces to try and curb crime. Five on your side's Brent Solomon is live downtown with a look at the plan and what prompted the tension. Brent. Well, Mike, I'll tell you what, that council has a goal to cut down murders all across the St. Louis metro by 20% within the next three years. How to achieve that goal is what led to the clash you're about to see right now. I've sat here and, and, I've, and I've listened to all of your amendments, but this one, okay. I'm drawing the line. No, no. St. Louis Mayor Tashara Jones in a tense exchange with St. Charles County Executive Steve Elman. You can no longer, no more mandate what we do in the city of St. Louis's police department, no more than I can no. mandate what you do in St. Charles. This mandates a group on No. The council is creating a new advisory board, which will be made up of a diverse group of people, including social workers. Social workers are the key. If police answer a call and he ascertain what's going on, he can immediately call the social worker to come in, talk to the family, and see what kind of services that they will be needing. So that will free that police officer up to go do another call. Elman suggested St. Louis hires 10 more police officers first. So are you going to mandate that Clayton hires 10 more officers? We're not. But you're we're not, and saying, you're not going to mandate that St. Louis City does either. We caught up with Elman after the meeting. I think that probably having a, a, a good police force is more important, but I'm willing to, to try the other stuff. But are we really in a, in a position here where we want to do experiments? He says crime is holding the region back. When they see St. Louis, and they see we're like number three crime city. First thing they ask us is, well, where's a, where's a safe place to, you know, where's a safe place to stay? Elman says one problem is St. Louis is paying police officers lower than other municipalities, including his own. Some people might say, where do we get the money? Well, I could give you three words, but I don't even need to say three words. I'll say three letters. NFL. He's seemingly referring to St. Louis, soon having to decide how to spend RAM settlement money. In the end, the council ultimately shot down many of Elman's ideas, which included making sure there were as many police officers and prosecutors on that new board as there are social workers. The council decided that of the nearly six dozen seats, Police will make up some 18. Elected leaders will make up 18. Live in St. Louis tonight, Brent Solomon, five on your side. Turning now to the weather first forecast, another chilly night across St. Louis, and it will be another cold morning. But a big warm up is on the way. Meteorologist Jim Castillo is in for Scott, and he says that warmer air will be here by tomorrow afternoon, Jim. Yes, it will. You know, Brent's scarf looked great, and you'll need it tonight and even tomorrow morning. So this high pressure came right from Canada and then as it moved our way, you know, it spins clockwise. We're on that colder side that uh, where you get the northerly winds and of course that milder side is just about to move into the area. So a southwest wind for tomorrow. More on that coming up, but it's cold again tonight. 32 degrees. Some of us down in the upper 20s. Uh, we don't have any freeze warnings. We had a hard freeze in our western counties last night uh, and very dry air is in play here, so we don't have a lot of frost to talk about, but there might be some patchy areas, but 44 right now and that humidity is going up just a little bit. So here are the headlines. Cold tonight, sunny, warmer tomorrow. We'll be in the 60s, but those 70s head our way starting Friday. More on that and storm chances coming up.
Tonight, it's still a slow go on Interstate 44 near Sullivan. Crews are still working to clean up the wreckage from a deadly, fiery crash that happened more than 16 hours ago. Here's video from around 6.30 this morning showing the fire. The Missouri State Highway Patrol says a semi going westbound crossed through the cable barriers and hit a car head-on in the eastbound lanes. The driver of that car, 59-year-old Edith McKee of Sullivan, died. The truck driver suffered minor injuries. A car crash that killed two MoDOT workers on the job nearly three years ago in South St. Louis County is now before the Missouri Supreme Court. New tonight, Five Intersides' Robert Townsend explains the legal battle the family is now fighting. Kelly Caitlin Anderson was pregnant when she was killed. Now her family is still fighting for compensation, but MoDOT says this case is not that simple. She was just an amazing girl. Um, she loved life. She loved her country and she loved her family. On November 18th, 2021, 25 year old Caitlin Anderson and 58 year old James Brooks were working on Telegraph Road when a car drove through the traffic cones and hit them. Both MoDOT workers died at the scene. Caitlin was six months pregnant. Her unborn son, Jax, also died. Michael Brown, a third worker, was seriously injured. I just couldn't wait to see her be a mom. And I can't wait to spoil him. If they would have protected that work zone, as the policy states, Caitlin and Jax would be here. This accident had a profound impact on the entire MoDOT community. On Wednesday, the Missouri Supreme Court heard oral arguments from both sides. There are several key issues, including what amount of compensation should Anderson's family receive? What's more, MoDOT claims Anderson's unborn baby was their employee, and the case is a workers' comp issue. I was shocked when they came up with that. Our attorney said it best that he is a unique individual and under Missouri state statute as a unique individual he is entitled to every protection that any other human being on this planet is entitled. In a statement Andrew Munwiller the family's attorney said in part the case is now in the Missouri Supreme Court's hands we have hope that justice will be done. I feel that the Supreme Court's made of parents and and grandparents and I I think that they'll they'll do the right thing. A spokesperson says MoDOT does not comment on pending litigations. Tomorrow would have been Caitlin Anderson's 28th birthday. Her family will place a flower covered cross at the crash site. A push to keep Missourians safe from drivers fleeing police is one step closer to becoming state law. Today, the Missouri House passed Valentine's Law. It's named after St. Louis County Police Detective Antonio Valentine. He was killed in the line of duty in a head-on crash with a stolen car. The bill calls for stricter penalties for people who flee police and now goes to the Senate. New information tonight is shedding new light on the shocking fight between two Hazelwood East students that put 16-year-old Kaylee Gain in the hospital with a severe head injury. Teachers and school leaders are now facing a flood of violent threats. An attorney for the district says those threats started pouring in after Attorney General Andrew Bailey launched an investigation suggesting that the school's DEI policies contributed to the violence. The district calls many of his claims egregious. We're looking into whether or not, uh, you know, there's any sort of legal action we can take to stop him from being such a bully and using his office just to, for political purposes. A Hazelwood district spokesperson confirms at least one student was suspended for a fight at the school. That happened the day before the violent attack. After nearly six months, baseball is back 15 hours from now. The Cardinals will take the field in Los Angeles to play the Dodgers. And one week from tomorrow, the Redbirds will fly back to Bush Stadium for their home opener. Five on your side's Laura Barczewski is live tonight with some of the big changes at the ballpark this season. Laura? Lots of exciting things coming up, Mike and Kelly. This will be the 19th opening day here at Clark and 8th Street at Bush Stadium. They opened the doors here in 2006. And of course, a lot of things have changed, but the passion on and off the field is still the same. 
Cardinals baseball is almost here. We are so excited. We can't wait. You can almost smell the freshly cut grass, hear the fans buzzing as they cheer on their favorite players and even taste the hot dogs and nachos. We can never make a hot dog at home like they taste at a ballpark. Every year, the St. Louis Cardinals bring something new to the stadium for fans. This year, they'll of course have new things on the menu like nacho fries and a waffle nacho sundae, new gear in the store, and roughly 60 different theme nights. Maybe you might not come down on a Tuesday night in July, but hey, you are a huge fan of Christmas and it's Christmas in July. You have to take home this ugly sweater. So it's really fun to sort of pair something else that folks love with Cardinals baseball, which we know that everybody in St. Louis is a fan of. But it's not always just about the game, the players or even material things. It's about the community, which pours their love into the team and they plan to pour it right back out through Cardinals Cares. We have our own youth baseball softball program. Uh, we give grants to other nonprofits that support kids, and we also have ball fields that we've built. The team's foundation supports those efforts through donations like the 50 50 raffle and auctions, which fans will see around the park this season. This year, they're also working with the Komen Breast Cancer Foundation and other nonprofits. We have a partnership with the American Red Cross, so being able to um, have our Cardinals blood drive and have more uh, units of blood collected to be able to save lives is really important. And how about the team? President Bill DeWitt III says they're ready. Let's not repeat what happened last year, but let's use it as a catalyst for improving on this club and getting back to where we belong, which is division championships and deep October playoff runs. Opening day festivities start next Thursday as early as 10 a.m. And we'll have all the details on KSDK.com where you can find a timeline of everything that's going to be happening next week. Mike and Kelly. Thanks, Laura. Sports Director Frank Cusimano will have more on the Cardinals opening day roster that's coming up later in sports. And for more on what's new at Bush this season and who will be in the Cardinals clubhouse, just text the word cards to 314-425-5355 and we'll send you a link. A somber discovery tonight in the wreckage of the Baltimore Bridge collapse. The reason crews are stopping their search for other victims. More people living paycheck to paycheck, struggling to make ends meet. They don't have any money left over after they just kind of pay the bills. Tonight, five ways to stretch your dollar without giving up any of the extras. A cold start tomorrow, then a big warm up just in time for Easter. Plus, I'm timing out any storm chances. Tonight, we learned the search and recovery effort following yesterday's bridge collapse in Baltimore is now a salvage operation. Late today, crews discovered the bodies of two missing road workers in the wreckage of the Francis Scott Key Bridge. Authorities believe four more victims may be buried in the rubble. Divers have been working in incredibly dangerous and difficult conditions, navigating twisted steel, jagged boulders, and the dark, cold waters of the Patasco River. Divers are no longer able, able to safely navigate or operate around that. We have exhausted all search efforts in the areas around this, this wreckage. The NTSB has recovered the data recorder of the container ship that hit the bridge, causing it to collapse. The Biden administration says it is too early to say when the nation's 11th busiest port will reopen. Former U.S. Senator Joe Lieberman has died. The independent from Connecticut served in the Senate for 24 years before stepping down in 2013. Lieberman became the first Jewish American to be nominated to a major party's presidential ticket in 2000 as Democrat Al Gore's running mate. And then eight years later, he was on the short list to join John McCain on the Republican ticket. His family says he passed away this afternoon in New York after suffering complications from a fall. Joe Lieberman was 82. A celebration of life will be held Friday for University of Missouri student Riley Strain. The service will take place in his hometown of Springfield, Missouri. The 22-year-old's body was found in the Cumberland River in Nashville, Tennessee last week. Strain disappeared earlier this month during a fraternity trip. Investigators believe his death was accidental. Schnooks is now taking applications, and we're not just talking about for checkers, stockers, and baggers. The local grocery store chain launched an accelerator program today called Schnooks Springboard. Participants will get a $5,000 grant and attend business development classes. Once they finish the program, their products will be sold on a trial basis at area Schnooks stores. The deadline to apply is May 12th, 
and we have a link in the As Seen on TV section of KSDK.com. Too many of us are feeling broke these days. According to research from the Lending Club, 62% of adults in the U.S. say they're living paycheck to paycheck. Michelle Lee talks with a money expert on how to break the cycle in tonight's Making Ends Meet. Making ends meet sure is hard. With inflation and higher interest, you may feel nickel and dimed. They don't have any money left over after they just kind of pay the bills. Lynette Calfani Cox is known as the money coach. She says if your checkbook has bottomed out, there is hope. The good news is that there are a lot of strategies that people can do in order to break that cycle and stop living paycheck to paycheck. Lynette says there are five areas where we can save up to $10,000 a year by making some changes. For example, considering a nanny share could save you 10 grand alone if two families share the same caregiver. Another idea, do a balance transfer on credit cards. Sites like cardratings.com even reviews cards and offers. If you do that, and if you have, say, $10,000 in debt that you're carrying right now, and a lot of folks have more than that, um, but if you have a 20% interest rate, you'll be able to save $2,000 per year just by making the switch and getting one of those, um, you know, teaser offers on your credit cards. I love what you have to say about number three, phone service, because I struggle with this too. Well, one of the strategies you can use to stop living paycheck to paycheck is switch it up and go from a typical kind of postpaid phone to a prepaid phone. And there are really a lot of great options out there. And when it comes to groceries, remember to stay away from the center aisles at the store. That alone could save a family of four up to $1,500 a year simply by avoiding processed foods. And and this is one of those things where not only will it help you with your wallet, it'll help you with your waistline. Um, so I do think it's a switch that a lot of people can make. And finally, take a look at your medicine cabinet. Making a few swaps for generics could save you hundreds, if not more, a month. In St. Louis, RX Outreach is a nonprofit pharmacy that sells only generics. And check out GoodRx for comparison pricing. Just make a switch from brand name medicine to generic medicines, and that'll save you 70%. Small changes that make big differences at the end of every year. For Making Ends Meet, Michelle Lee, Five on Your Side. Meteorologist Jim Castillo is in for Scott tonight. He joins us now with that weather first <laughs> forecast, and it's gonna be a chilly night, but then a warm up is on the way, right, Jim? Huge warm up, nice. yeah, and it'll carry us. You know, some some of the models are trying to get us to 80 for a wow. couple of days this weekend, very close to it. So yeah, a big warm up, and the 70s begin on Friday. So just one more day here, but really, the past couple of days we were in the 50s, and uh, tonight, look at this, it's it's clear, it's beautiful, a live look down Market Street to the Arch. And high pressure right there. It's going to keep us chilly again tonight, but it's slowly moving on to the east. So that cooler side's there, the warmer backside of it's right here. And so that milder air starts to move in here after tomorrow morning. And right now we've dropped to 37 and DeSoto and Chesterfield, also Litchfield coming in at 37. Now the high today, 55, uh, two degrees warmer than yesterday, but we should be closer to about 61. And that low this morning, 33 and 40 is the average overnight low. So we're way below that again tonight, 29 to about 32 on average across the area. Uh, no frost advisories or freeze warnings in effect, but it's very cold. And then tomorrow it's sunshine and southwest wind at 5 to 10, about 65. You know, some uh, models are showing about 67. So that warmer air is definitely on the way. And then we're in the 70s as we get into Friday. Now, with a warm front coming our way and low pressure to the north, cold front trailing from that, we'll watch for a slight chance of a shower or storm during the overnight hours Friday night into Saturday, and then then we have a better chance as we get into Sunday. Here's late in the day, early evening. A warm front comes in here. Chance of showers and storms and some dry time in there also, but a better chance on Monday and that chance of severe weather is ramping up. So we'll watch uh, Monday very carefully, possibly even Sunday. All right, Cardinals, they play next Thursday. Wow, we're excited about that. 72 degrees, all right, for the home opener, southwest wind at about 11 miles an hour. And the eclipse, remember that? 
12 days away. Wow, everybody's talking about that, getting excited for that too. Seven day forecast shows temperatures. There it is. Mike, I know you're so happy. <laughs> 74. I love those high temperatures. Yeah, we're, you know, we're close to 80 a couple of days, Saturday and also Monday. A little cooler Tuesday, and then uh, then we're back at the home opener. looks beautiful. Well, That's yeah. what we want. We want yeah. great yeah. weather for the home beautiful opener. Beautiful weather. Yeah. Thanks, Thank Jim. you, Jim. Yeah. Sports is next, Frank. This is not a political show, but I have two presidents coming up. The president of the Blues and the president of the Cardinals, plus the quarterback of the Battle Hawks and the coach of the Illini. Stick around, please. This Five on Your Side Sports Report is sponsored by Telly Tire and Auto Centers, driving your way since 1942. On paper, it doesn't look like a good matchup tomorrow in L.A. The Dodgers won 100 last season and spent over a billion dollars to improve themselves. The Cardinals lost 91 and spent 100 million. The Dodgers will throw their ace tomorrow, Tyler Glasnow. The Cardinals ace, Sonny Gray, will be watching with a hamstring injury. The Birds will throw Miles Michaelis, who is quite good in the spring. They may have three players or four players, 23 years or younger in the starting lineup, guys like Mason Wynn. In terms of the goals for 2024? It's never smart to predict some sort of October specific thing, but um, that's our goal every year is, is, to, is to be here in October uh, when it's sudden death and the, um, the air starts to cool and people are just hanging on every pitch. That's what, that's what it's all about. Those were the good old days. The Battle Hawks will also begin their season this week. A.J. McCarron and the boys will be in Detroit taking on the Michigan Panthers. This football team has a lot of support here. A.J., thoughts on the game, please. You really have to adjust on the fly um, as the game goes on to what they're doing and uh, their calls. And um, really, it's just about us, just focusing on our job, doing what we're supposed to do, being in the right spots, communication being good and then just going out and playing. The Blues will host the Flames tomorrow night, and they will do it without Oscar Sundquist. He tore his ACL Monday night and will be out for the season. The Blues trail the Golden Knights for the final playoff spot by six points with 10 games left. We have some incredible college hockey coming to Centene this weekend for the Maryland Heights Regional. The winner will move on to the Frozen Four. The regional final could be a rematch of the Big Ten Championship with Michigan against Michigan State. Four really good programs will be here. Western Michigan and North Dakota are the others. And what a great lead-in for next year's Frozen Four. You know, it's been since 2007 when we had the last Frozen Four here in St. Louis. Uh, we don't want to go that long the next time. We want to show people what happens when you bring great college hockey to St. Louis. Brad Underwood has brought great college basketball to Champaign, Illinois. The Fighting Illini are just two wins away from their first Final Four appearance in two decades. But in the way, the number two seed, Iowa State tomorrow night, and a possible number one matchup against UConn, who's one of the best teams in the country. And I have to say, as good as Iowa State's defense is, and as great as UConn has been all season long, this Illinois team is so explosive. Ninth in the country in scoring. So long, so skilled, so experienced. And I think the coach is pretty pleased with this group. This group is has been as fun a group as I've ever been around. Um, they've they've added years to my coaching life. I know that. Uh, just just simply being on being along on the ride with them has has, has made it fun, and and uh, they've adhered to everything we've tried to do and listened, and and that makes it really enjoyable. And as I've been saying all year, I love this team. They are so tall. They're one of the few teams in the history of college basketball to not have a starter under 6'6". They're so old. They got a bunch of guys between 22 and 24. Iowa State's really good. They beat Houston to win the Big 12. And then there's UConn. It's well, you said early on you thought Illinois might be a Final Four team. Yeah, I didn't think UConn was going to be in their bracket, though. It's a <laughs> minor a, detail. That's a problem. Yes. And where are we on the SLU head coach? Yeah. Well, it's going to happen. The problem is Indiana State's in the Final Four, the NIT, so they're not playing until next Tuesday. So if they win Tuesday, then they play Thursday. I mean, this thing could last another eight days. But you think they're getting shirts? There's no doubt in my mind. All yes. Right. Mm, yep, you heard it here. Thanks. Well, you may know her as Stifler's mom or Tandy McCoy. Jennifer Coolidge's latest gig bringing her to Washington University. 
Well, get this. Actress Jennifer Coolidge is coming to Washington University. The American Pie and White Lotus star will deliver this year's commencement address. Wash U will also award the Golden Globe and Emmy winner with an honorary doctorate of fine arts. The ceremony will take place May 13th on Francis Olympic Field. I'd love to hear that commencement address. 7-Eleven says it's releasing a new line of sparkling waters. Three flavors, lemon lime, green apple, and sweet orange are already available. The convenience store is also teasing a fourth flair, flavor inspired by its Big Bite Hot Dog. Uh. Many are skeptical because 7-Eleven says more details would be released April 1st, which oh, is April Fool's Day. Yes. <laughs> and yeah. Jim has one final check of the weather. Yeah, just a cold night tonight. It's clear, and then those warmer days are ahead. Tomorrow, 65, and then we're in the 70s through Easter weekend. And there you have it. Five on your side at 10. The Tonight Show starring Jimmy Fallon is next. Be sure to start your day with Today in St. Louis. That starts at 4 a.m. Have a great tomorrow.